This episode is brought to you by Linode. We've got a coupon. You can sign up for Linode and basically have free service for a little while. They got to make sure you're legit and not a bot, though. So, but you got to give them some information. But you can spin up a machine for Rust or Go or your own self hosted WireGuard VPN or uh, Amazon like block storage. Yeah, it turns out S3, really expensive. All the Amazon services are crazy expensive. Even Netlify is expensive. You can DIY it and you can do it better on Linode. And you can set it up for free and learn. And uh, we're doing Devember, which is something we do every year in December. But it's not December yet. But the world situation, you've got time probably. You want to learn Rust or Go in the cloud? Work on a Linux virtual machine with Linode? Yeah, there's a link for Devember below. So check that out. Develop some uh, remote employment skills. Yeah. They might be in demand. Yeah, it turns out that uh, it's never been easier. Like, if you work as any kind of developer, it has never been easier to get a job, mostly, because everybody has to work remote at this point. So... Hello. Today's October 30th, and we're doing Robots and Nonsense. Hey, we got the month right today. I did. Tomorrow I will be in the woods away from uh the wars to come for a weekend nice happy halloween are you scouting bug out locations no i'm doing 16 miles of just hiking around a lake yeah but while you're hiking you'd be like mm, that'd be a good place to yeah, go when I the riots hang come. out here yeah. yeah find a water source oh, it's near a lake so wait a minute next tuesday's not election day no i, yeah, I just Is realized Oh, uh, well, we making jokes about <laughs> that the last that episode. Is, yeah, you've already commented on it. Don't worry. It's too late, chat. So, remote work, everybody's doing it. But you might not realize just how inclusive that is. Literally everybody is working <laughs> remotely. This is crazy, and uh, I don't see anything bad about it. <laughs> the BBC News has the headline that is, The Forklift Truck Drivers Who Never Leave Their Desks. You should read that mentally with the same inflection that you would read the men who stare at goats. <laughs> <laughs> so they got the like the full that's not four individual forklift feeds. This man is not that efficient. It's like a three sixty degree, they got, you know, four cameras oh, you. covering everything. And they also got a microphone on the forklift so you know if someone screams in agony you'd be like oh i feel like this is the uh the amazon approach for making the warehouses safer is to just do all of this like pull the people out of the warehouses but the warehouses have to be like faster and more dangerous phantom auto is the name of this company and they will actually go in and you know retrofit your forklifts and get you set up for this this is my favorite picture why is he wearing safety gear it's OSHA. It's an OSHA requirement. <laughs> the laws haven't caught up with the, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you could get a future in uh, drone forklifting. Now, once we've got about five years of about 100 guys driving the forklift in all these different scenarios, we'll have an incredible data set that we can use to feed to an AI. And then take their job. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. But if something falls off the forklift, what happens? Oh, we missed the Tesla auto self-driving story. Or is that in robot? Yeah, it's in Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought that was in business. Eh, yeah, robot needed more. Okay. Sometimes if we get a little one that's a little anemic, I'll, I'll I, move. I on. guarantee there were comments on Wednesday that were like, I'm self you don't want to talk about Tesla's wins. And it's uh, like, mm. we've established that this week's comment section is already going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a fire. nightmare. Engagement it, challenge. Even if, we, even if we hadn't mentioned anything, I think it would have been a nightmare. Hey, that's an engagement challenge. Is like, if you like us, but you don't want to participate, just this one time, try to help us rebuff the unwashed masses. So you can't ask for that. Because yeah. they'll rebel against it. That's it's a, a natural yeah. urge to not do what you guys. <sighs> it's only the worst of humanity <laughs> that voluntarily comments. <laughs> We get some nice comments. Uh, it's yeah. also human nature to overlook the good ones. We actually get a lot of nice comments, I should say. <laughs> but it's human nature to overlook those and see the disgusting horridness. That comes I don't always them. read them. I do. I mean, I do read them sometimes, but sometimes I just kind of... There's a, a lot of people who are in love with you and then a lot of people who just attack you because you're a girl, I think. Yeah, there's a little bit of mix. Sometimes, I mean, like they're legit criticisms, but sometimes it's more just like... I don't like you because you're mostly no. no. I don't think there's a yeah. whole lot of logic yeah. about those. A lot of people also 
accuse us of talking over you, and I really try to be conscious about that, but I think it's the technology. Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the delay, because sometimes I talk over you guys as well. Anyway, AI tech. It's coming, and you'll never guess where it's coming, <laughs> because how did the Google people not rebel against this? Did they didn't they just, know. They didn't know yet? They didn't know Are yet. Are they finding out this They're week? They're finding out this week, <laughs> we thanks to have, the level one news. We might have another story next week about this one. <laughs> The Intercept is reporting Google AI tech will be used for virtual border wall, uh, Customs and Border Patrol contract shows. Google Cloud will be used in conjunction with the uh, Andreal Industries surveillance tech on the U.S.-Mexico border. Krista, I feel like that's the Lord of the reference. I was just going to ask her It something. is. It's uh, Andreal, I believe. And uh, that's Aragorn's sword in Lord of the Rings. Oh. <laughs> what, a, what a miscarriage of the name to use it for this. Did, he, did he use his sword to uh, surveil migrants? No, no. <laughs> That's so weird. Here's and the, for most of the story, it's actually broken. Here's one of the polls. So this also reminds me of like in Half-Life, those things that were in the ground monitoring everything. It's basically what this is. Except it's way up high. Yeah. <laughs> Someone should snap it in half and be like, oh, I was just trying to make it more like the sword. <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of them. You have to do a lot of snapping. And so they are going to allow ICE to use their data. It's not perfectly clear exactly what they're going to be doing, but they will be definitely using that vision system that they have. Now, do you think that migrants could defeat that if they're trying to cross the border illegally by carrying a large pane of glass over their head? Because the, gl the glass is opaque to the thermal vision. Well, I don't think it's necessarily going to be individuals, but they also talked about like vehicles and stuff like that. Mm. So the coyote... If he drives the same truck every time, <laughs> the AI is going to be like, hey, this truck shows up every Wednesday. I think they already have that for the highways. But this is just over the the border, like off-road. Yeah. So these are going to be stuck in the ground at intervals, and it's going to be huge coverage. It's going to be real tough for people on foot who are dying of thirst to <laughs> contend against the AI eye in the sky, especially from Google. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Now, speaking of facial recognition, an interesting thing, when you build a weapon, you don't get to choose who uses it. <laughs> the New York Times reports that activists turn facial recognition tools against their creators, or their, I forget the headline, against the police. So this is a story about a guy out in Portland. Things are real dicey in Portland. This is an individual, a protester, who's kind of been a prolific pro protester. They've permitted law enforcement in Portland to cover up their name tags. So if you're shooting video... I don't video, think it's allowed, but they just don't punish it. Yeah, so uh, if you're shooting video or something like that, and you know, like violence erupts, and it's like, okay, there's enough... There's 17 different angles of this. Let's figure out the police officers that were involved. Uh, it's harder to do that because all the identifying marks in their uniform are covered. Well, this guy is using uh, face recognition for that. Portland, of course, banned face recognition. So this guy said, hey, as a citizen, can I still use that? And they got clarification from the mayor that while creepy, yes, you can totally do that. And he's putting together much like, uh, what's the name of the company that scrapes social media? Uh, Clearview. Clearview. He's doing like a Clearview type thing where he finds social media pictures of the officers and then matches them up so and they are everybody's wearing face covering now yeah especially the cops but he claims to be able to put them together just based on the the visible parts because he's got these social media <laughs> libraries the, the article author here also drew a uh, a parallel in that somebody in hong kong did this with the hong kong police who was uh, summarily arrested <laughs> yeah. and then uh, he's, abandoned the project he's disappeared <laughs> <laughs> There's certain certain parallels there. I can't I can't help but notice. And clearly, the police would like that to happen. <laughs> uh, this guy probably should stop going to protests because there might be an accident. Oh, he was accidentally shot by this you know barbecue meat joint owner. Oh, sorry. We have investigated ourselves and found no wrongdoing. <laughs> oh, he took a rubber bullet. How unfortunate! But the powder burns on his face show it was two inches away. <laughs> Yeah, so like you said, Tesla. They got the big full self-driving. Who gets it? Uh, the <laughs> Tesla's choosing it. They, they call them uh, cautious and excellent drivers. How do you determine that? Well, harvesting every data point from the car probably helps. <laughs> so that gives. does that not give you the idea? They're issuing a driver credit score. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to know what your driver credit score is? <laughs> yours, would be, yours would be terrible. Yeah. You pick up your phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine would be terrible because I hit the bank, the curb the other day on uh, going through the bank drive-thru. 
Well, somehow. Oh, really? Yeah, they had a they they were doing work in one of the things, and they had a cone out, and I was like, I'll swerve to avoid the cone, and I just and it was very slow. I mean, it was like one mile an hour, but I scraped the side uh, on the curb because I was trying to avoid the cone. Well, that doesn't really endanger other drivers, though. Well, but still, well, that cone though has a. I miss. I misjudged the fatness of the vehicle by about an inch. You never recovered from the old vehicle being your yeah. standard. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get this, uh, you get some new features. Supposedly, it's good enough to drive almost anywhere. Bring it to rural eastern Kentucky. <laughs> Let's see what it can do there. Really guarantee, test it, yeah. Guarantee it won't. Tesla starts full self-driving beta rollout. Elon Musk says it will be extremely slow and cautious for the beta rollout. So the big difference with this self-driving uh, update is that the a- they completely reworked the AI. So now all of the cameras work together and the AI retains temporal context. Whereas before, it would use only the 2D frames from one camera. It now uses things like parallax. It can take into account parallax as things move to judge distance and things like that. It reproduces a 3D understanding of the environment and maintains that 3D understanding of the environment from all the cameras, like six cameras in all, um, around around the car. And so some of the early reports from this are very, very good, that it's impressive. It can drive without lanes and avoid vehicles that are parked on the side and blah, blah, blah. We'll see. I expect it'll take about two to three weeks to get videos of people abusing it. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll take two to three weeks to get the first video of it doing something bad and causing property damage. Well, they say we'll it's see. going really slow, right? Will it, will it just be like a traffic jam behind one little Tesla? That's the other thing. Are Teslas now going to become the tractors? <laughs> no, I think the slow is that that when it doesn't know, it just proceeds really slowly. Yeah, well, that's still, like depending on how its confidence is. Well, it talked about how uh, it was um, the the car was moving really rapidly in a roundabout, and the passenger in the car was like screaming because the car looked like it was about to rear end a bunch of parked cars on the side of the roundabout, but it had actually switched into the lane where the parked cars were to go around something in front of it. The predictive thing showed that it knew that the cars were parked in the roundabout and it knew that it was in a roundabout and that the maneuver that the car proposed was perfectly reasonable, but the occupants of the car thought it was doing it a little too fast. Just drive your car. (laughs) Jesus. Now, in these uncertain times, you might be feeling a little down. Krista, what would you say your anxiety level is? Uh, I was saying it was like, all right, but I had some weird nightmares last night, so apparently not great. I've you're just su- repressed it now. You think your subconscious is now taking it on? Absorbing yeah, it's it? Like, yeah, it's just like, okay, you know, we're just going to ignore this. We're going to play Phasmophobia. <laughs> and then at night, you'll have horrible nightmares. Well, this doesn't help you because you're not uh, Singaporean. Is that? That doesn't seem Sing, right. That sounds right. No, you I think? think that sounds right. Yeah. That's what it Someone says in the, the headline. Someone in the comments could be like, no. Singaporean? Hey, yeah, but it's not our not our way of saying it. It's their, the, Singa- or the Straight Times way of saying it. They have a new avenue for dealing with these uncertain times. New emotionally intelligent chatbot to help Singaporeans stressed by the thing. It's uh, t- Timasek? Timasek? It's a, is that a penguin? It looks like a penguin. At first, I thought it was like one of those little like mushroom dudes from Fantasia, because the the building in the background kind of makes it look like the cap. But it is just a penguin. I think. Do they have penguins in Singapore? I think so. They use Linux there, right? <laughs> sure, someone does. Well, anyway, uh, it's an AI, and if you want, you can talk to it, and it'll give you you know like some reassurances about how to deal with the nightmare that is our current world if you're into that sort of thing and finally uh i thought this was going to be like a thing you could attach to your own door no it's not that it's a crazy promotional thing and this is on uh prnewswire.com this is the crazy (laughs) promotional website i don't Who? Know, how many cities do you think this will go to? One. This was an ad agency yeah. stunt. <laughs> you think there's they exactly, had some leftover money and in their we budget? We got baited into featuring yeah. it. You think there's like exactly one of these? Yeah. Well, forget the tricks. Reese's brand brings the treats with this robotic Halloween door. So it's it's literally a Halloween door on a scooter, and it has a mail slot that dispenses king size candy bars. Is it Reese's or Reese's? Reese's. 
I always say Reese's, but I think that it's just Reese's. Reese's. But my family says uh, we also say Reese pieces. <laughs> it's Reese's monkeys, Reese's pieces. Reese pieces. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this thing is gonna, it's gonna come to your town. It's mobile. It plays music and it emits fog. And then it comes to your door, and if you say trick or treat, it gives you candy. Look at the little kid in the cow costume. This is going to fall on a child. I, <laughs> I have never seen a costume I've loved so much as this giant fat cow. Where? Is that a still picture? Little, yeah. Go down, scroll down to the pictures, and then it's the second photo if you click on it. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't even line up with his face. <laughs> oh, that's one of those positive pressure outfits, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's cute. So it's. I put this in the robot section. Actually, it's just remote control. There's actually an operator who can be, what was it, like 500 yards away? <laughs> who will run over the children? <laughs> <laughs> How many. Uh, cups or packages of cups you think that is in the hopper there <laughs> I, the, you know the size of that thing could store hundreds if not you know over a thousand but they're king size yeah yeah do you think a kid opens that up and it's just like the little tiny cups and they're like oh not king size and they just throw it at the door nine feet built in bluetooth speaker it's a long way to go to get what's it, like dollar fifty for one of those mm-hmm candies this story is uh well let's get some more comments here <laughs> <laughs> let me disagree with Krista on another thing uh this is terrible and i'm not saying that it's not terrible but is it is this different than for example painting this oh yeah that's a good question Krista. With the painting, I guess it depends on how well it's done, but like <laughs> a painting, generally speaking, you're going to be able to tell that it's not real. If an image like this circulates, like that can really screw with your job chances because it's like, how do I know if it's real or not? That's the reality we're coming to, though, is like, how do we know what images and videos are real? Mm, we, we need statutory protection it's like you know if you discover somebody's nude pictures on social media that make, that makes them a protected class well let's do the headline because people don't know what we're <clears> talking about deep fake bot on telegram is violating women by forging nudes from regular pics free easy and requiring just a single photo the deep fake bot has produced more than 100,000 fake pornographic images publicly posted online for anyone to see I really like the clip art that they did because it's uh yeah it, it explains what's going on really well. <laughs> and it, it does it tastefully. Yeah. You can, you can tell what's going on there, even though there are no actual like genitals or breasts on display. <laughs> now, here's, here's where this is going to go. And this, I'm predicting, here's, here's another story prediction. And this is dark. But what's, so Krista pointed out a, a pretty good, good idea there. It's like, okay, job description or a job application. You go in and it's going to be like, oh, listen. We found these pictures online. And the woman's going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. That's a deep fake. I was just jogging in the park. And somebody, that's not actually my, I don't look like that naked. And the guy's going to go like, I'm going to need to see. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, is like, I mean, ideally, you know, it wouldn't matter. But like, people do Google you when you apply for a job. And even if this was a dude, like this might make you think twice about hiring them if they have naked pictures all over the internet. Cause it's like, you know, a client's gonna Google that. But I don't know if, well, I guess if they got the image from social media, they would know your name. Yeah, it's. So yeah, it's but this, not ideal. this appears to be mostly random. They're just pulling random pictures and they're not really like tying it to anybody. They're just creating random nudes and flooding the internet with them. What if the way to combat this is that Everybody gets deep fake nudes. And we never know what's real and what isn't from now on. I think that's where we're going though. Like that's the reality. Like next election cycle, deep fake video is gonna be good enough that like you can't trust anything. Well, most people don't trust anything now. So I think I think that that yeah, I mean ultimately none of that I, even even now, I think with the laws we have today, that the rules could totally be uh, you know, 
does having naked pictures of you online mean that you're going to do this job better or worse? <clears throat> and I think the answer is but it doesn't you, matter. But you can't prove that that's why they chose not to hire you. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be impossible to enforce. Well, and, and imagine, too, so, like, you're hiring someone to save for, like, a sales position. And, you know, maybe your clientele is normally really sort of conservative or something. And say they look up their salesperson and there's naked pictures of the salesperson online, like, you know, oh, and, would and they hire someone for that? Like, if they know that that's there? In something competitive like real estate, it will totally be the case that you have one realtor who generates fake naked pictures of another <laughs> realtor in order to sabotage the other realtor. <laughs> I was... I mean, that's, that's a, it's crazy to even have to think like that, but like, Do you know that, that the uh, dystopia we're in now... Do you know that Abraham Lincoln did that? He bought newspapers and anonymously trashed his political opponents. And when he was a lawyer, he would go after the uh, the other people in the cases. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it's been going on for yeah. a long time, folks. <laughs> the only solution is to just not engage. And it's getting yeah, so you, hard to not engage. But Krista, if you're walking Rue, you could be hit by this. I know. So there's no opting out of this. Well, you, gotta, you just have to wear like really baggy clothes, so it's harder. They said that the, this could do t-shirt and shorts. Like most of the women are wearing bikinis or like sports bras or whatever, but it could do t-shirt and shorts. In August, are you gonna are you gonna not wear a t-shirt and shorts when I, you're walking? Your it room? is it is rough here in August without shorts. Well, on a, we're gonna have to put a thirty-foot wall around the compound. <laughs> <laughs> That'll just they'll fly a drone over that. You can't stop them. On a bright note, Flippy, everybody loves Flippy. That's Name true. me one person who doesn't love Flippy. Flippy's being mass Fast produced. Forward. Flippy is not only has is Flippy being mass produced, but Flippy, since we last talked about him, has learned so much. Flippy, the $30,000 automated robot fast food cook, is now for sale with demand through the roof. Sees how it grill, see how it grills burgers and fries and onion rings. That feels like it should be like a lyric oh. to a, a song. I think our graphics driver just crashed. Uh -oh. It's back. I think we're okay. So, oh, okay. Click away from that. There you go. Flippy, there he is. Now, his upgrades include running on this track, this overhead track so that he can work multiple stations. Yes, that's a deep fryer. He deep fries now. <laughs> and yes, that's a weird code of, you know, visual audio something. Those little icons. It's not there. QR codes, but it's like a, a visual indicator so that the camera can lock on and be like, oh, I know how to deal with this. He can now uh, swap out his spatulas to keep clean ones and, and just rotate them into the wash. He can make 19 different kinds of foods he can tell the difference between a beef burger and a plant-based burger. Nice. Huh. So, uh, <laughs> there he is cleaning. Cleaning his grill. So there's some more jobs wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing Not that they paid well in the first place, but. Doing some deep frying. A lot of uh, sports arenas have bought Flippy because obviously you got to crank out a lot. Yeah. And so they'll do that. White Castle, he works at White Castle now. Yeah, look at all these foods that Flippy can make. It's amazing. Chicken rings. Uh. As, a, as a technical achievement, it is actually really incredible. I want to I wanna cr credit the engineer who came up with chicken rings. It's like, we're going to sell you less chicken. You're not going to notice because we're going to give it to you in ring format. <laughs> and now we'll get our nuggets for free. Brilliant. Uh... This is making me hungry. I haven't eaten lunch. I had oatmeal this morning and that's it. You know, when the robots take over, they will raise Flippy up as like, you know, one of the precursor robot gods <laughs> because of the way that he slowly killed humanity with all these fried foods. Yeah. It's a master stroke and <laughs> robot destruction. Or, or we, you know, humanity evolves to be strong against fried foods. I don't think that's worth <laughs> <laughs> We've been eating them for quite a while. They're still bad for us. Well, here's uh, here's here's one that uh, you know we certainly showcased this week. When you talk about politics, people get riled up. <laughs> Tensions over politics at work have HR on guard. Is it going to be an HR complaint? Uh, we saw the Coinbase thing, where the Coinbase thing was like, "Do you feel passionately about what's happening around you? Get out." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you feel like you should have a stake in the society around you? No, you are only a worker. So they're talking about how uh, they people are reporting that even when you say don't deal with politics, people learn other people's politics. Now, a lot of people are really vocal about it. And when that happens, they don't work want to work together on projects. They avoid each other, and it boils over, especially in these election times. If you can get stabbed over what brand of video card you want, dot, dot, dot. That's a fake story. <laughs> I don't know. It was maybe, maybe our office is just sort of jaded, but like, I feel like we can argue over politics, but then it's like, Let's just face it, it's all terrible, right? We're all going to get screwed, and then we all laugh and go back to doing what we were doing. It is funny how many people in the comments try to ascribe, you know, something we say as to being strongly one thing or the other, and it's like, no, I'm for reason, like reasonableness and like reason, and there is nothing in the world that makes me think that there's any hope for that. When we get both barrels in the same comment section, (laughs) I feel like we did the right thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, apparently we managed to, like, somehow split it right down the middle yeah if both groups of unreasonable people hate you (laughs) you're doing something right excellent excellent uh some more good news or at least uh an accomplishment that we can be proud of as a human you know i mean this is a pretty amazing thing that our space program has done the video from this is incredible nasa's osiris rex collects sample from surface of asteroid Bennu. so it landed on the uh like it looked like it was like oh this is going to be a hard landing it was not a hard landing the rocks went everywhere and it was evident that that asteroid did not have very much gravity at all so it kind of like just swooped down and like somewhat hovered, but then blasted the surface with some kind of gas to stir stuff up and then collected the sample and swooped back out. And it, it pinned its solar panels back to protect them. <laughs> really cool. And it did all of this under automation because it's an 18 minute round trip for commands to go to this guy. So they just like, here's your... Here's your landing program. Initiate. <laughs> Here's your objective. And Good he luck. took care yeah. of it. So we'll, we'll be able to collect this uh, material in like 2023. Well, they're going <clears> to... <throat> so they've got to figure out if he got enough. And yes, we've assigned him a gender. <laughs> I don't know why, but we did. Uh, if he didn't get enough in January, he's going back in. Mm. But if he did get enough, he decouples the collection pod and that comes back. Nice. Incredible. I have some... <laughs> for the, uh, the the robot is male. It's a uh, Rex. What are we gonna yeah. do if the if the the rock comes back and there's a little tiny mollusk fossil? Probably nothing. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking more along the lines of the Andromeda strain, but <laughs> whichever tribe collects it from the ruins of NASA <laughs> will probably try to sell it to a warlord. <laughs> Krista, I, I imagine you know you're you're uh, young enough or old enough, I guess I would say that uh, you watched Charlie Brown uh, during the yeah, holidays, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I mean that was something that you could just you could set your watch to it when that it got and, to uh, be Rudolph. Rudolph always yeah. came on like later in the season. October, the Great Pumpkin. It right. was just it was on. It was going to be on. Well, times change. It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. won't air on broadcast TV, but will stream on Apple TV Plus for free. That didn't encourage anybody to subscribe to Apple TV Plus. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got the impression that Peanuts sold the rights, right? Or His is, family must have. Or is NBC just not interested anymore? It wasn't obvious. Or maybe I overlooked it. Anyway, the end of an era. That's kind of sad if you're a family that lives, you know, in an area like where we we grew up, and there's no internet, so you can't really stream TV. In an you area, you get to watch Charlie Brown. In an area where you can still watch Andy Griffith. <laughs> oh yeah, that always came on at the same time every day. I'm pretty sure it still does. Although I haven't been back there in a while to watch TV. Be sad TV's if that was also terrible. gone. <laughs> yeah. When I went home to visit my mom recently, I was like, "Wow, I forgot how bad this really is." Yeah. There was no Charlie Brown. It was just reality TV. What do you think they're going to run in All place day. of Charlie Brown this year? Uh, Nicki Minaj's uh, <laughs> Fun House or something. It's the uh, it's probably, yeah, it's probably just like one long giant <laughs> yeah. ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jess. 
Chess is a game that takes a lot of skill and a lot of memorization, let's be fair. <laughs> and you know what's really good at memorizing every possible move combination? Computers. <laughs> that creates an issue. Chess is cheating crisis. Paranoia has become the culture. As the game enjoys a boom online, players ranging from grandmasters to preteens are getting caught computer doping. So yeah, it's like you can play a live game of chess, but if you're playing the game against the computer off screen, then, you know, the computer can suggest moves. And it's like, oh, that's a good move. I should do that. So for, obviously you're not doing in-person chess tournaments right now. (laughs) Right. Mostly. In these uncertain times. So they've gone to some crazy lengths to prevent cheating. And that shows you that how hard a chess nerd will go to cheat. So you might have to have a person come to your home and sit and watch you. Or you might have to have multiple cameras. Cameras like 360 cameras. You might have to have eye tracking. Because <laughs> if you have a forward facing camera, it'd be easy to have another screen behind that. And you're just like, and the screen could be recording that and then repeating the game. They, they go to great lengths. And how do you stop it? Well, they just have all these different crazy ways of attempting it. I, I can't help but notice this little piece of the article. An Armenian grandmaster booted out for suspicious play accused his opponent of, quote, doing pee pee in his pampers, quote. Was that, that was he booted for the comment or? I don't know. Doing pee pee. They spelled it weird. They spelled it P I P I. He's not a native English speaker. (laughs) But I mean, the article, the article writer would have. That was a quote, right? Yeah, but usually if there's like a misspelling, they'll put like S I C. To indicate that they it know was, it's a misspelling, but well, it was probably a text quote. He was probably chatting in the the chess thing. I don't know. This is some lazy editing on here. They're not all Kyle Wiggers, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Can't all be. This was, uh, you know, I think Krista, you mentioned this was your favorite article this week. I think it might be it, mine as well, just because if anything encapsulate the darkness that we live in, <laughs> it's and the corporate power. You know, people throw around the whole fascist word, and I don't think anybody, well, not a lot of people get it in, you know, like what it really is. It really is just government and corporate power crushing freedom. The monetization of literally everything. So here we go. Proprietary grapes come with draconian end user license agreement. The recipient of the produce contained in this package agrees not to propagate or reproduce any portion of this produce, including but not limited to seeds, stems, tissues, and fruit. So if you buy this, these grapes, you can't you can't plant them or reproduce them. See, it's weird though because like these grapes wouldn't be reproducible anyway. If you planted these, they're probably not going to germinate, even if they are seed seeded grapes. Yeah. Although they might be most, seedless. Most produce at the grocery store is treated with a spray that will keep it from sprouting. So like I've had an onion on my countertop in the sun for like probably two weeks now, and it still hasn't sprouted. Well, but, you uh, can. You this can, is next level. You can uh, graft it. So, like, if you've got a good grape root system, you could graft those onto the root system, and then it would start to grow. And that's how you can, you know, maintain a variety or but whatever. It, it's probably like a ninety-nine percent uh, failure rate, right? Yeah. So, you, if you got if you bought a bunch of grapes and got one through, now you've got a viable yeah plant. And then you've got a lawsuit on your hands. What's crazy is I just planted a bunch of garlic I brought from the store, and it is sprouting. (laughs) So, I mean, you could say I'm a criminal, chat. Oh, they're not going to sue an individual. And then we had that guy on Twitter that was like, uh, you should be paying royalties for streaming games. (laughs) This Never mind that you purchased the game to play in the first place, but... The site doesn't care that I've turned off the ad blocker. It still won't let me in. I don't remember what the live science story was. I guess we'll never know. It's in the one tab. Make up your own commentary for that story. (laughs) (laughs) That's too bad. This was just abject stupidity. (laughs) I I guess it's good for a PR stunt, and yeah, we're talking about it. But is it really even space? (laughs) British supermarket launched a chicken nugget into space. Well, it was the edge of space. Near space. Iceland Foods launched a chicken nugget. And launch isn't even, I mean, is launch the right word? They sent it up on a balloon. Well, they sent it up on a weather balloon, and then the weather balloon had a module something. But it was also just, it was also a camera and some other stuff in addition to the chicken nugget. See, I think this is all just a lie. You can see the cables. 
<laughs> well, I mean, he had to have a parachute, Krista. They couldn't let him fall to the earth. <laughs> what well, would you die? You'd definitely die if a, a chicken nugget came hurtling out of the sky. No, uh, yeah. there's not enough. Yeah, the terminal velocity of a chicken nugget is not going to be that big. Yeah, because our, our atmosphere is our atmosphere is very thick. So, and also, uh, it might even break up. <laughs> got a burnt to a crisp. Warm, yeah. <laughs> crispy nuggies. Well, uh, but it's still somehow it frozen high enough in the for middle. that, right? Yeah. What? It didn't get high enough for that, did it? Yeah. Yeah. So it had like did a heat shield or something. Through? No, I think that'll hit the terminal velocity before the air, the air, uh, the air moving past it would be enough to heat it up significantly. Oh, okay. Well. Nugget traveled through Earth's atmosphere to an altitude of one hundred and ten thousand feet. It floated in the region known as near space. I don't even know really what they're advertising here. Icelandic foods. Are, are people are not, nuggets are out of this world? Are people not buying uh, nuggets? Nugget. Everybody. Nuggets are always going to be a big seller, right? Who knows? We do buy them a lot. They're such an easy food. Like you just throw them in the oven and forget about them. Well, if you do that, Chris, you'll have a house fire. Well, <laughs> you forget about them for like twenty minutes when you cook, and then you're done. <laughs> Notice that I put this story in the nonsense section. <laughs> Atari just crashed the PS5 party with a brand new console. The PS5 is going to have to compete against Atari's new VCS games console this November. No, this isn't a repeat of like the story we did two, three years ago. It's like, oh, look, Atari. We're coming back. We're banking on the nostalgia. Spoiler alert. It's a computer. Literally, it's an AMD something. Uh like a Ryzen something and an AMD graphics card oh they didn't they don't say which one just AMD Ryzen CPU and AMD it, Radeon GPU it's probably one of those APUs with 8 gigs of RAM yeah 8 gigs of RAM and uh, it runs Linux it's literally just a little computer yeah notice that the, the marketing photo down toward the bottom it's a picture of young kids playing these games and I'm like is that really your market here no is the young kid gonna run out and be like, "Dad, Dad, get me the little Art Atari thing, please! I need to play this, these games." I don't know what this is gonna cost, but you could get like a Nuck with an Atari emulator. We should do a video. And <laughs> now that wouldn't be legal. <laughs> well, Atari. It, it would be if you got the cartridges. I definitely still have some Atari cartridges. There'd be a little more to it though to read the cartridge. Yeah. It says three hundred and eighty nine dollars. <laughs> Directly, <laughs> directly from Atari. Hang no, on. I'll click, I'll click on the website. We're going to get a Raspberry Pi for $35. <laughs> We're going to 3D print yeah, a case. Pre order. There's a, there's a thing on the website. Well, you can get it in different colors. They are going to have some newer game releases, probably like mobile games or something, that would take a little bit more horsepower than a Raspberry Pi. It's going to need the accelerated graphics for something. Wow. Have you seen how fast the new Raspberry Pi is? You can play Quake I 2 at like 100 FPS. I didn't quite believe that, so I went to their website, and it is indeed that expensive. Yeah, probably won't sell many of those, but uh, remember and Master the, the P's? Control the controllers are like 60 bucks a piece. Remember Master P's gaming system? And it was just the that Chinese emulator? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is kind of like that. Yeah. Although, you are going to get real parts, it seems like. So... I don't know. Get this a nice wood grain console. I mean, compare that that horsepower with the PlayStation Xbox offerings. It's it's not close. So, uh, in response to the Hunter Biden stuff, the left threw this out. I think this is also a political move. Uh, although I will say, it wouldn't surprise me if Rudy Giuliani was a lecherous piece of garbage <laughs> Rudy Giuliani faces questions after a compromising scene in new Borat film Trump, Trump's personal attorney has oh, a, an indiscreet uh, indiscreet encounter with an actor playing Borat's daughter in a hotel room during the pandemic so the, it's a very short scene oh did they seriously not have it the, uh, it wasn't I don't know when this, this was published but I think they just released it on Netflix like yesterday or was no no but the still image every article I saw had the still image it's oh him. yeah I had the image he, she's standing in front of him you see her back he's laying on the bed like laying back in the bed reaching into his pants <laughs> but the the thing that I saw they were like oh he was just tucking in his shirt and I'm like 
Who lays on the bed to tuck their shirt in? Now, the thing I saw, saw said that he was removing recording equipment. Like they had, they had the mic pack in his pants. Hmm. In the front? No. They did point out that um, although in the movie she is a 14-year-old girl, which have you have you heard about that movie? Like the the uh, premise is Borat comes back to America to offer his 14-year-old daughter to Mike Pence. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so she's supposed to be a 14 year old girl. She's actually 24. So even if Rudy Giuliani was tricked into thinking there was some sort of sex act coming, then it that would have been fine. It would have been legal. Consenting adults and all that. Disgusting? Guess, yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Illegal? No. He did, uh, I guess the, the guy who plays Borat like ran into the room and was like, she's too old for you. Stop. <laughs> Uh, we always want to throw in as many animal stories as we can get. Yeah. This one is uh, its funny. I wish they had a video because I would have liked to have watched these little guys. I think the, the bystander who caught these images did not shoot a video, unfortunately. <laughs> Hand over the trash. Raccoons break into a California bank. The pair were, were noticed causing havoc inside a bank by the customer withdrawing money outside the building. I guess the bank was closed. Look at that. <laughs> Sir, we need They're to talk about your 401k. <laughs> You're over your car's extended warranty. <laughs> but yeah, they. it turns out that they went in. Uh, they, there was a tree that had access to the ventilation system. And then they walked on the uh, fault ceiling and fell through. <laughs> uh, what a fun time. The old one-two caper. They just uh, oh. hustled them out. They didn't even capture them. That would be a great, like, I would be thrilled if I was the wildlife control person who got called to this job. They said they took them, they said they took them a while to catch them. I guess they're pretty, a lot of hiding places in a bank. (laughs) (laughs) We've uh, done a couple of stories about these calls. um, And not just the ones that are, in this they're talking about the calls where it's like, hey, uh, I live in a really nice neighborhood and there's a black guy. (laughs) (laughs) What's he doing? Do you, did, did we do the story about um, who was the actress? She was doing a bunch. Yeah, we did that story. She was like a big Black Lives Matter outspoken person on Twitter. And then the black kid with the BB gun showed up in her yard and she couldn't call the cops fast enough. <laughs> he doesn't belong here. <laughs> so those kinds of calls are a problem and they clog up 911. And people also call 911 about like, when their fast food order is wrong or whatever. And San Francisco wants to do something about it. The board is in San Francisco is pushing the Karen Act forward to ban racist 911 calls. 911 calls. 911. When you call the Porsche dealership <laughs> to report. How long racism. for the time around then? Every time I see, I, just, I, don't, I don't know. Caution against racially exploitative non-emergencies. See that it says banning it, but really what they mean is just finding people to do that. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, it's probably not good to make your population afraid to call nine one one, but it is phenomenally stupid. Some of the, these calls. Yeah. I mean, you really should know the difference between an emergency and, I, if anything, I mean, this is still not okay, but if you are not in any immediate danger, you call the police. <laughs> not nine one one. The uh, the other thing is whenever you're, you know, uh, in one of these situations, like doing this dehumanizes the other party, and that's opening the door to some really dark and sinister things to be able to happen. When you don't think of the other person as a human being, then it gets crazy. Or you assume that they don't have the right to be doing whatever it is they're doing. Yeah, like. It's not up to you to decide what other people get to do. That's not an emergency, like, help me, I'm going to die situation. Uh, We talk a lot about not committing crimes on social media and not admitting to crimes on social media. You should probably never admit to a crime. It's almost never in your best interest to do that. But really, really stupid to do it on social media. Rapper who bragged about unemployment scam arrested in Las Vegas for unemployment scam. Wah, wah. Shocking. Pro criminal tip. <laughs> so this guy figured out it was something to do with the pandemic assistance program. And because that was getting, uh, this was, by the way, uh, Nuke Blizzy. 
Right. You guys know yes. Blizzy. No, Blizzy I didn't. Right. I didn't recognize I this. You don't know Nuke Blizzy? He's with uh, Fat Wizza. <laughs> uh, so they they figured out um, this stuff was getting pushed through really quickly. There wasn't a lot of oversight, so they had access to a bunch of different addresses and mailboxes. So they just signed up at all of them, different names, and they showed up and they cashed them out. Made. Uh, like five hundred thousand dollars, I think. I feel like this is going to be like used as an example for why the rest of America shouldn't get more, you know, assistance with the current situation, which is very bad. Because people, there are <laughs> there are people out there that are not trying to scam the system that actually do need some kind of help. Another article has been removed. Yeah, this one's gone. What was this? Do you remember? I don't. I do like their four hundred four page, but. Not relevant to the discussion at hand. I feel like we're losing a lot of stories today. This, this time guys, next week, that the whole story is going to be like that. It's just every story is just going to be deleted. Poor guy's immortalized. <laughs> His failure. Did you like their little comment? We appreciate the gravity of the situation. Uh. As the guy falls. <laughs> <laughs> and another story about uh, government silence and hypocrisy and corruption <laughs> the big story here is the fact that uh big trial.net is the only place covering this <laughs> this has been a complete media blackout because they didn't want to embarrass this young man big trial da's gun violence counselor shoots and kills male prostitute by ralph cipriano he's probably going to be targeted it's not good so this is the da's gun violence counselor and according to the police report, he met somebody in a cemetery for sex. He, w- he hooked it up on Instagram. But it was paid sex. And then the guy robbed him, or attempted to rob him, with a gun. But he put his gun down. And so when he put his gun down, the DA gun violence guy shot him. And he died. Which, how hilarious that the DA gun violence guy's carrying a gun. So, uh, yeah, the guy put the gun in his belt to take the money. Because he was robbing him. And this guy, the prostitute, had... A huge rap sheet of doing this over and over. Oh yeah, the huge the he was out on bail, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, it was one of those bail programs where they like reduce the bail to clear out because of the the vid. It's it's an avalanche of bad government decisions here, just you know, like cresting into a town. <laughs> and but the thing about it is, all right, that's self defense, right? No problem there. No problem with that shooting. Somebody pulls a gun on you and tries to rob you. You shoot them. Hey. Yeah. Legal gun. Registered to him. Carrying it legally. But this was a complete media blackout. They did not allow I, this to be reported anywhere. You said that, but I when I looked up the guy's name, I found like five stories about it. Well, it's been leaked now. This was on the 21st. Oh, okay. But if you read the article at the time, the DA's office agreed that none of this would get out because it could be embarrassing to him. And then there was some stuff about like, oh, we don't want to out him as being gay because he could be targeted by that or something. I don't know. They used that as the excuse. But really, it was about the DA's office looking really bad in terms of, you know, like the shooting counselor shooting somebody. Pro gun yeah. owner tip. When you carry a gun, you instantly lose every argument. You have to be willing to eat other people's crap because if you pull that gun you get you know, it's it's a, a, a terrible terrible thing that will happen to you after that even if you're in the right so another situation where i would advise uh you know really thinking it through when you're carrying a gun instagram prostitutes <laughs> right. probably shouldn't do that don't mix the two yeah that's already kind of dangerous to begin with i mean they also didn't charge him as with the, the prostitution crime well he admitted it <laughs> I'm gonna go rob a bank, but I'll admit it. So no charges. That's that's kind of the way it works anymore, right? As long as you have enough money to cover it. At well, least he admitted it. Well, this this gentleman he admitted what he did, and uh, he will have to still pay the price because this is actually not allowed. In case you didn't know, <laughs> Fort Worth Star Telegram says man who owns a Fort Worth house performed castration, said he was a cannibal please say uh i'm kind of like made a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, yeah. Well, I think we did another story about this a while back. There is a, a sort of a scene online where some people want to perform castrations and other people want castrations. <laughs> you need to legalize it so it can be regulated. I, I don't know. Is, that, <laughs> is that something? I mean, I guess it's good that they don't breed, right? So they hooked up. The doctor, doc, quote unquote doctor, <laughs> paid the airfare. And he was like, no, I'll do it for free. You can stay at the house. Everything will be fine. So it sounded like they did this without putting him out. Just local oh. anesthetic. And gave him some shots. Did, performed the castration. And they said they were joking with him during it. It was like, oh, yeah, we're going to eat these because we're cannibals. And then that guy claimed that later on he was bleeding. And he was like, guys, I need to go to the hospital. And they were like, no, you don't. Do you want to eat some human flesh? Eventually, they were forced to take him to the hospital because they couldn't stop the bleeding. I think the other article we did, the guy died. Yeah. This guy survived? Yeah, this guy's good. They had to do more surgery at him at the ho- on him at the ho- hospital to fix the bad surgery. Uh, well, but, but, I mean, it's, it's not like he's, he's going back to normal. He is now a castrated man. Whoops. They charged these other two dudes with a bunch of crimes including operating without a license. That's a weird one to go to prison. It's like, what are you in for? Operating without a license. There's there's a lot of, like, if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, a lot of related stories about cannibals. And it's like, what? Why are there so many cannibal stories in 2020? <laughs> I don't... I don't. We're not getting We're that. not getting cannibals. Oh, we have so a Mitch McConnell story. I'll, I'll read the three related stories from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. National oh, News. Are, yeah. Accused grinder cannibal passes out in jail after not eating enough, Michigan grinder cops say. <laughs> Dark web cannibal planning to eat teenage girl met undercover cop instead, feds say. Man cannibalizing his 90-year-old grandmother is worst thing we've ever seen, California cops say. Wow. That, the dark web one, sounds like the other story, although that was in September. I don't think it was that recently, but it seems like there is this... There are Why people. Are there, so many? there are people who want to be eaten. What is that? Chat. If you're into that, explain your thought. Pro- Actually, don't. <laughs> don't, put that in don't, the don't. Don't announce crimes on social media. I'm not sure if that's a crime, but I think agreeing to let someone eat you probably is as crazy as that sounds. And finally, a dark story, but our international viewers will love it. <laughs> because they love to make these types of comments about Americans. And I gotta admit, this doesn't look good as far as playing into the stereotype. Not a Tw- proud day. This is on 12 on your side, so this is like a local news. 500 pound body causes fire at Henrico Crematory. So, this is a guy who died and wanted to be cremated. And 500 pounds of fat, it burns. It was it overwhelmed the crematory. Set the roof on fire. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, the best, there's a picture down here. Do you see there's a chicken nuggets advertisement in the corner? Oh, we got the ad blocker on. Oh, no. It's a, a blaze, and then it's got, like, the picture above it. But then there's the chicken nugget. Like, no, it's it's in the picture. Their insurance is probably not going to pay that either because there was probably oh. a, a thing in the machine. You're talking about right here. Yeah, the, the chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> How messed Something up! Smells good over here. You gotta be. You th- which one do you think came first, the crematorium or the fast food place next to it? <laughs> well, the crematorium is probably low key. Like you probably didn't won't, wouldn't notice it. I'd be like, mm, I, I smell like uh, <laughs> was that batter and chicken and there's something else. <laughs> That's it's, the special sauce. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it still smells it's, delicious. It's like Carl's Jr. Crematorium. <laughs> <Rude>. <laughs> All right, that's all the news we've got for this week. Thanks again to Linode. Do you got uh, you got some Rue showcase for us there? She's. I don't, they can probably hear her. My mic's probably. She's just sitting in the back going. Hmm. Yeah, we can hear. Her. Yeah, what's the matter? What do you want? She never answers. It's like she doesn't speak English. <laughs> she's adorable with those floppy ears folded forward yeah. like that. She's been like passed out up until this last story. She woke up and was like, "What are you doing?" Are you ready to go eat? Okay, we're gonna can go you, eat. Can you get Rue to say goodbye? Rue, can you talk? Oh, woo, 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 woo. She like kind of <laughs> looks down like, what are you, why are you saying that? Can you, can you speak? Woof. 
Okay. All right. No, she's not doing it. All right. Well, that's good enough. That's good enough. We will right. see you next week, hopefully, and good luck in November. <laughs> Bye, chat. <laughs>